We had a test. I didn't learn like exactly how the teacher thought. I went to YouTube, watched the video, I saw another method and I understood this method flat out. So during the test, we all rose. I was so confident then like I, I, I ate to this test. And like you are good to I'm, go. Yeah. I'm done <laughs> like a hundred. <laughs> a week later, the shared papers, everyone was getting their test papers, you've seen scores. Then I saw my own, I saw zero. <laughs> oh, oh I, I was like, I thought maybe the method gave me wrong answer. So I took someone that got high score, my friend. I looked at, I was checking out the answers, the same, the same, the same. The same. Ah. And you got your own answers? Also. I got the answers are the same, just different methods. So I walked up to the lecturer. And I was like, oh, sir, see, I got the same answer. Just, I used a different method yeah, on YouTube. And he was like, do I know it? Um, some of my lecturers will say that during their home time, you dare not, there's a corridor, like their office. So there's a corridor. You dare not go to that corridor Why? without not being invited. Why? You can't go there because they are so scared of the lecturer that <laughs> you can't. In fact, your lecturer can be coming and you are also coming. No, you, they're not going you well. <laughs> Thank you. All the all the school systems need to do is, as much as they want to avoid people abusing the technology, that's why they have to inform people this on what this is, how it should be used. Since you went to a private school, would you say it's compared to the schooling abroad? And is there any difference? What would you say is an overview? So since I went to Covenant University, uh, first of all, shout out to any Covenant person that watches this. <laughs> and they, you guys. they did a good job. But when it comes to comparison with Harbour Space here and Covenant University, there are some significant differences. First, we can also we can start with the time. Like for example, in Covenant, you can have you go to class, let's say seven in the morning, and you come back seven in the night. So you just run seven to seven journey. And the thing is, you give assignments. So it's not like that's the end. You have to do the assignments, and you know you end up being stressed out compared to here, where you just uh, do three hours. You give your assignments, or it could be a practical project. You go back and do it, and you still have enough time to either have time to work on maybe personal projects or whatever personal area of your life you want to improve. Or if you're working, you can still work and at the same time study. And, and that reminds me of one of my lecturers. Like there was a day we were in class, then he brought out his old book. Um, I think a book he used in, I think, 1980 or something like that. Hmm. He said this, he said, <laughs> look, this is the book that I used for my master's. Like, I could, then I'm also giving you battle if you know it's, <laughs> it's quality. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening from anywhere you're watching me. Today, I told you about what is going to happen today. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very interesting topic. My name is Samson Pius, if you are just watching me for the very first time. And you know what I do. I talk about relocation. I talk about different topics. And today, I'm talking about a very, 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 very interesting topic. It's crazy. Like, it's very, very crazy. With me, by my left and by my right hand side, is um, my, um, would I call them my classmate? Because one has graduated and one is still my classmate, like my schoolmate. So we're going to be talking about how education abroad has influenced us, like the difference between, um, um, the difference between schooling in abroad and schooling in Nigeria. Both of them have actually schooled in Nigeria and they have also experienced schooling in abroad, including me. So we're going to be talking about our experience and how schooling abroad has actually influenced us and um, what Nigerians should see or should expect anytime they move to abroad. It's going to be an interesting one. I'm begging you, watch this video to the end because definitely you're going to learn. Yeah, and for you that are just and for you that is just joining, please subscribe to this channel because if you eventually watch this and without subscribing, you will definitely 
get to not see me again and you want to watch more of this right so definitely subscribe and turn on your notification for you to see more of my videos and probably you'll be the first person to see my videos so by my right hand side is no other person than Okpayemi Olagoke a university graduate of University of Ibadan I go to talk it in two times <laughs> university university but he's a graduate of Ibadan, University of Ibadan in Nigeria, and a master's student also in Ibadan. And still yet, he's still doing master's for abroad in Harbour Space University. He's done, he's an alumni, and um, he's right here with me. I want him to introduce himself. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Samson, for this great opportunity and for bringing me to, the, to this podcast. So, uh, my name is Okoyemi Olagoki, and... As you said, I'm a graduate of the University of Ibadan and also a graduate of Abo Space University. Wow, it's nice to have you, Okpayemi. Like, I've always been wanting to have him on this show, but he's a very, very busy man. Okay, without further ado, I would want to introduce uh, the person by my left hand side, and his name is Daniel Dima. And is a graduate of Convenant University, Nigeria. You know, as Convenant being a the private, a rich kid. <laughs> but we're going to know whether the system is good because all, all these Nigerian schools, we don't trust them. So I want him to do this. I want him to do um, an introduction of himself and let me welcome him. Okay. Thank you, Samson, for having me on <laughs> set. Uh, my name is Okonicha Chukudima, not Dima Dania. Konnichiwa, Chiku Dima. I'm a graduate from Covenant University. I studied computer science, mm. and I'll be talking more on the educational system uh, during this set. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a very very interesting one. Like the topic is a very very long one, but trust me, it will not be a boring one. So. Uh, I don't know who's going to go first, but uh, who serve? Okay, I think uh, Okpayemi first. Then, if you have anything to still contribute, you can also still contribute. Okpayemi, you've left Nigeria. You've stayed here for uh, for for a couple of years, um, or let's say two years. Okpayemi, uh, what would you say is um, the system? How how would you say the system of Nigeria look like compared to the? Uh, the system abroad when you came here okay thank you for this question so i would say um from both my experience studying in nigeria and studying here at abo space i would say there is a big difference mm. because um coming from nigeria from a country where um electricity um in terms of technology technology is kind of low and I would say um, that's a kind of a huge difference because um, in Nigeria, for instance, um, our educational system is a little bit poor in terms of technology. And when I came to Abo Space Air, I experienced education in a new dimension as in there was this kind of feeling, like this kind of engagement that you have with your lecturers, that you have with your colleagues, that is actually lacking in the Nigerian system. And, you know, it's been really, really great. Um, I've learned a lot, like the way you actually approach even your lecturers, the office hours that is actually lacking in Nigeria. And in Nigeria, for instance, the students are usually scared of, um, um, yeah, scared about approaching the lecturers and stuff like that and you know i found out that air eh, lecturers are more approachable like mm. they are even like your friends you can just go chat with them talk with them even have a drink with them and yeah, yeah, yeah. you you get to learn a lot you get to engage with them in a different dimension and i think yeah for me it's 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 a great experience it's different from what i experienced back home and you know, I'm glad that I actually came here to talk to, about it. Yeah. 
Well, um, I, it, you know, we are, going to, we, are, we are going to go deep into it. I know like, it's, it's way deeper than even what we just said. So I just wanted you to give us an overview on how the system looks like. We're going to go dive deep. So I want to hear you, uh, Dima, how uh, the system has been. Uh, you, actually, you went to a private school, your own, like, your own soft shop. So <laughs> um, since you went to a private school, would you say it's compared to the schooling abroad? And is there any difference? What would you say is an overview? Okay. Um, so I, since I went to Covenant University, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, shout out to any Covenant person <laughs> that watches this. <laughs> and they, See you guys. they did a good job. They did a good job on educating students. But when it comes to comparison with um, Harbour Space here and Covenant University, there are some significant differences. First, we can also we can start with the time. Like, for example, in Covenant, you can have, you go to class, let's say, 7 in the morning and you okay. come back 7 in the night. So you just run 7 to 7 journey. Like and 7 in the morning to 7. 7 p.m. Okay. And the thing is, you give assignments. So it's not like that's the end. You have to do the assignments once the day has ended, class has ended. So you spend too much time just walking and, you know, you end up being stressed out compared to here where you just uh, do three hours, you give your assignments or it could be a practical project. You go back and do it and you still have enough time to either have time to work on maybe personal projects or whatever personal area of your life you want to improve. Or if you're working, you can still work and at the same time study. So I'll say the time here is really flexible and it helps uh, students engage more with other activities. And so it's hmm. like speeding up growth here. Yeah. I heard you when you said like you go to school by seven and still come back by seven. Okay, I mean, we're having a conversation here. Like, does it, does it really make sense? Like stressing a kid or would I say a youth from seven o'clock in the in the morning to seven in the evening? Do you see, do you think that person has learned enough? Is that a proper? Um, yeah, I would say um, it's not actually good enough. But, um, like going to school from seven a.m. to seven p.m. It's a little bit much. Um, I would say um, learning is about you know. Yeah, like assimilating what your lecturers are teaching you. And it gets to a point where you might be a little bit stressed out mm -hmm. and you can really cope uh, much like that. And it just gets to that point. And I don't think the Nigerian system is actually um, putting that into consideration because we are all human beings. I swear. We are not machines. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that this this timing actually should be adjusted like he said um at abo space you just spend three hours sometimes you don't have to get nobody expects you to get up by seven o'clock i mean what the <laughs> hell why would you why then, would you get up by then, seven a.m to go to school i remember back then then i i have this man this lecturer in my class and in my school then because i studied the um, i went to federal university of technology we, I, I supposed to have said where I went to school. So there's this man they call him Okafo. Mm -hmm. Okafo teaches engine drawing. If you are one minute after seven, you are not entering his class. Mm -hmm. Imagine when we have to wake up by 6 a.m. to attend Okafo's class. We have to, the pressure and it's like, to me, I didn't see it. I, I, I was just seeing it more like I am just satisfying him. I was not seeing it yeah. like I was going to learn. It's 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 one of the issues because the, at the end of the day, you just find out majority of students just want to just carry just, just, just get the grades. And go. Let's just get the grades. Let's just learning. mark the attendance. Like it's no longer there's no learning involved again. It's now just to just satisfy just those conditions. And this thing has now made Nigerian system of education like people just want to just satisfy the requirements. Yeah. Did you at any point experience these seven o'clock classes or six o'clock or even late night classes? Yes, uh, we experienced it a lot. Give, in, give us a in, break in the University of Zadu. Person was doing that because shit. um yeah, I have uh, some of um, many lecturers like that that they will expect you to come to school by even six a.m. 
Some people might fix, yeah, some like, people might they, fix their class 6 a.m. Yeah, why are children, they, Nico? I, I don't know how they do it. Sometimes I believe that do, those guys don't actually have a life. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, how would you tell sad students? Sad list yeah, Sad list. Then the <laughs> thing is that you will meet the lecturer in the class at that yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. You can't fall. You will always be in the you class at be that like, time. Come on, don't you have a house? You can't fall. <laughs> we'll be there five minutes to 7 or 8. <laughs> it's always very, very weird. Maybe they have an issue and with their wife. Yeah, probably. <laughs> some things like that. And uh, <clears throat> you will get to a point that it begins to stress you out. You just, oh, let me just come to this class. And in fact, you will discuss with your colleagues that, oh, I can't wait to get out of this place. I can't wait to get out of this school. I just want to graduate and go away. Like, it, it, it gets to that point. Oh. And you just, you know, you're not learning again. You just want to just fulfill just the requirements. I just want to graduate. Fulfill your electives, your required course, compulsory, and just go away. Nothing. Um, um, there was... There was this lecturer that I used to joke about, like um, the university um, don't just uh, pass through the university, let the, the university, university pass through. A very wrong yes. phrase. It's three, um, it's three ways. Um, you go to class, you go to church, you come back to, to your house, yes. go to school, go to church, come back again, no life. <laughs> so that's, um, that's the way the federal universities in Nigeria have okay. actually been built because um, you don't have time for other things. Yeah. Like, if you don't want to fail, especially in UI, I will mention OAU too, and some other federal universities, they don't, they don't want you to have a life. All you just have to do is come, read. Um, after you read, you do exam, pour what you actually have read. Just to pour that in. And I think that's like a very, very big issue too the method of their teaching. teaching yeah. And they just want you to, they'll teach you and they just want you to exactly what they what they gave you, you should pour it in. Yeah, in I've, had, I've, had, uh, I've had some um, examples like of something similar to that. Uh, we had a test. Okay. Um, I didn't learn like exactly how the teacher taught it. I went to YouTube, watched the video, I saw another method and I understood this method throughout. Out. So during the test, we all rose. I was so confident then, like I, I, I aced to this test. And like you are good to I'm, go. I am done, sure. like a hundred. <laughs> Then uh, a week later, the shared papers, everyone was getting their test paper, you've seen scores. Mm -hmm. Then I saw more and I saw zero. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I, I was like, I thought maybe the method gave me wrong answer. So I took someone that got high score, my friend. I looked at, I was checking out the answers, the same, the same, the same. The same. Ah. And you got the own answers? Also. I got the answers are the same, just different methods. So I walked up to the lecturer. And I was like, oh, sir, see, I got the same answer. I just, I used a different method on YouTube. And he was like, do I know it? Ah! Uh, did I teach you this? <laughs> I was confused. Oh. I, I was just, I was like, but it's the same answer, just a different approach. I don't know it. So the that's your great. The does not even know it. The, now, oh, and the thing is, the yeah, thing about the that science is, is, the problem, is, is, it's is, is the fact that it's uniform. Like if you actually apply this particular method, you are expected to get those results. So I, do, I don't understand why you actually marked it down because you used another method and you actually arrived at the same answer. answer. That's it's science. Not it's not, cannot take just only one just approach. One there approach. are different approaches to solve it. So, to, that man knows a big book. The problem yeah, with the uh, majority of the lecturers, like in Niger I'm giving Nigeria as a whole, mm. is majority of them are outdated like some of them are giving knowledge of their time and like, they are still pouring and they are for still giving it like giving some things have changed some uh, metrics and other stuff have evolved so uh, majority some of them don't follow this evolution and they still See. give us that old i mean yes the old method doesn't become obsolete at once it's still applicable the only difference is now one method is now faster than Stop the other and the other one is you know it's just like upgrading yeah. already exists mm -hmm. but some of them they don't you know some and people there are some people like this once they are comfortable with something they don't like change 
Like yes. once they are at a place, that is it. Once, once they found that place comfortable. They can no move it. They are they okay. They are so, good. And, 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 and that reminds me of one of my lecturers. Like there was a day um, we were in class. Then he brought out his old book. Um, I think a book he used in, I think, 1980 or something like that. Hmm. He said this. He said, <laughs> look, this is the book that I used for my master's. Like, I, then I'm also giving you battle. If you know it's, it's quality. <laughs> and you, you know what is funny? Really? The first class student in your class will take him so serious. <laughs> because that first class now will take it and become a lecturer and still give it out to. It's a generational thing. <laughs> You are giving me a book of when you went to school. How old is this lecturer? He's like he's going to like 55, 57. Do you know when he finished his master? 20, 25 years ago book. He's giving it to you like he's, like he should go and photocopy or what? Like he's dictating it to us and people are writing it down. They were jotting it down. Just <laughs> 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 And this brings me to the thing is that like this brings me to, to this thing causes my practice. Mm. Because now the, the, the lecturers expect you to pour exactly what um, you were yeah. taught. Yeah. And my practice starts from when I know what to answer. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, if I don't know what to answer, why would I want to carry a chip into the hall? It's, mm. confu it's confusing because if they ask you what is a now, and the teacher wants you to write a now is the name of any person, animal, place of things. Okay, yeah. That's um, a, this guy that is not serious will go back and write it on a sheet of paper and carry it into the hall. I'm going to write it. And then write it. And if you don't write that, what is the noun? He's, he's, he's going to fail. Going to so you are now making that student to go and cram. Mm. And because of his cramming it on his head now, he might see it as stress. Like, why would I cram this thing? So they don't want to, they don't want you to know it naturally because if you know something naturally, why would you do my practice? Mm. Mm. Why would you do my practice? So this is more like the beginning of. In fact, I even feel examination as scam. Do you agree with me? <laughs> this this brings me to like examination is a scam. If you see, exactly. if you study, if you study <laughs> see, it depends. See, it depends. See, yeah. see, we have all studied abroad. Like yeah. we are, we are actually in harbor space. Like how, like. Apple space, do they like if how would I put it? You you are, you've learned a lot for the period of a year you've been in Apple space, right? Mm -hmm. As have there been any form of any critical exams like you you are you are you're being um um you're being checked by what you know, copy and paste what except probably like from the calculations, but based on presentation of things that are theoretical, like just normal theory. Mm -hmm. Were you were you or probably GST, they call it GST in my school. Uh, we have GST. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so those uh, writing, writing, writing. Yeah, the thing is here, learning is flexible. It's not, it's not as rigid as the way we're talking of it in Nigeria, where you have to give um, what you see is what you get, like, mm -hmm. exactly. So it's more of, um, it's flexible. Everybody can take different approach. You see, I write by the same answer. That's the, the main point is, you understood the concept. That's concept. what they try to get out of us here. But they, like in, in Nigeria, Nigeria, is a different case. So examinations, uh, for me personally, examinations are important. They are good. They are not mm. bad. But it's it's now how someone... Because look, if you look at it now, we're all interested in what we're learning here in Apple Space, right? Like, it's not like the first... We're all interested. We're all making efforts to... Um, learn it and understand, understand it. it. So when you have that, uh, it might not be like for data science. Also, we have exam. You guys might not have exam. Yeah, or also, we have solve, yes, we have <laughs> exam. So uh, when it comes out, it's not like ah, it's so like we were interested in learning it. So when once we see the um, the, pattern. the stuff, we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like there might be some parts where and here most of the exams are it's open like all oh, um. You, you're giving your, let's say you're meant to code something. Okay. You have the resources from class. All you have to do is just uh, achieve a certain result, but you still have those class. You have to explain. Yeah, just, the, the part is, the, the truth is, once you go into the real world, like, as someone that is working, nobody um, hides all the information. You There's no, now, um, Google is locked, so you can't search it. That's the truth the is, once okay. you can't remember something, 
you search or you as long as you know how to arrive at your goal maybe you've forgotten a step you just go okay this is how it works you put in it in Nigeria they see this thing as my practice because exactly. of the way the system is the, used. the system yeah, is yeah. too straight it's, it's too, too straight. it's too rigid it's too rigid like it's more of you learn 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 then at the end of the exam you just pour the exact same thing you learned without so everyone is just Trying to, uh, I have to cram this whole thing, put it in my head as it is. Once you reach, you just pour, pour it out, and that's the end. I just remember one, one exam I wrote when I was in my undergraduate studies. That um, exam was about about ten questions, but this ten question has a lot of children. Right. Number one, A, 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 I, A, I, I, A, I, 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 A, I, 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 I. One B. B I I B I I. Now, when you check out all these questions, at the end of the day, these questions are over 70 questions, but they say it's 10. First of all, that's where they started duping us. <laughs> they start manipulating. Now, you don't have to start pouring everything that you've learned throughout the whole semester. Yeah. And you now pour it. And once you don't um, get it, you have you have you failed. You failed. Uh, and another thing um, but, I would like to hold on. Let me okay. let me see something. But in Harbour Space here, when I came to Harbour Space, first of all, I'm on a scholarship. And when they told me that, um, when they told me that if I don't get up to 80% in my scholarship, that the scholarship is going to be withdrawn from me. I was scared because in the normal Nigerian system, I know few reach 80. <laughs> Do you get? Because I was expecting that this is what I will see when I get here. How will I manage and get to it? I'm not, the, I'm not an A student. You get? Me, I'm, I'm more like the average, I'm like the normal student that can just get the A's and just, um, not even an A, like the normal B, B, C, and uh, hey. I'm not the really A because me, I'll be entrepreneur, you understand? So I'm, I'm just like that. So when they told me that I need to get 80%, I said, Wahala, may say, I want to get this thing. But trust me, when I came here, I saw the system of education. I am not brain proud, but I am I am doing excellently well. Like the system is fitting to my pattern. Mm. I don't have to be a very um, very intelligent person, mm. but mm. because mm. I understood or understand what that teacher is saying, mm. and the teacher was not just um, giving me examination, letting me to read so many things in the mm. long run. But he, she, 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 she gives me homework and grade me based on every homework I submit, my character, my behavior, my attitude, my participation in class, everything, my attendance, and it keeps going down. Even the, ex, the, the so-called exam, which I will not call exam, or probably the last day of the, the, they call it presentation, the last day, it is not even having up to 20, or let's, say, let's call it 30%. That means what you have been doing from the beginning is actually what guarantees your success. But in Nigeria, <laughs> in Nigeria, if you just um, manage a ten class, um, you can't write tests. Test is like the sixth week or the half of the yeah, semester. Yeah, half of the that, te that test is, is 30 marks. Then the next time you are going to have anything to do with any exam or anything is till the end of the, end semester. Of the semester. And the end of the semester now is what determines your success in that okay. is like mm -hmm. what like it's, it's crazy man yeah, and I've actually 70 noticed, marks one day two um, hours exam i've actually noticed that this um system in nigeria this educational system in nigeria actually even affects the mental health of students um i would in in university of Ibadan, there are uh, we've had cases of students during examination time when they when they read, when they're yeah, under yeah, pressure, pressure, they are reading yeah, a lot. Yeah, there was only fear, fear, would, especially when they come out, have the way we can. We have, um, we have cases of students collapsing, even students having Conversion. mental <laughs> problems, <laughs> mental <laughs> illness, because of running it. mad. That's even students running yeah. mad. Because, like, the <laughs> brain has been stressed out. The, like, the, this brain. Yeah. Yes. Because... Stuff everything inside last you minute. Know, you never hear this situation where they were like, 
Exam fever. Like, where is that yeah. phrase from? Yeah. It's from Nigeria. From Nigeria. Exam fever. Exam. And that is, is, is there anything like exam fever in the abroad? Since when you came to this place, is there anything like exam fever? How will you be having fever when you go to have this exam? Exam. Because it's of not, the, it's, the fear, the nervousness. And the thing is that even when you want to have exams abroad, you have exams like um, 30%, 40%, mm. that doesn't even carry um like a, a higher percentage of your grade a, like you have other things that actually add to your grade like your assignments your participation in the class your presentation and even other things that actually adds to it nigerian way they don't even know their students because the lecturer <laughs> know you when you're in class the the lecturer know you. Except, yeah, except you are actually close. I won't actually blame them because we are much. You are, you are talking about yeah, 150, 200 students, 200 it's students possible in to class. have a good relationship with yeah. ah. See, think about it. When a lecturer, when a lecturer is teaching 400 level, 300 level, 300 level he's um, 300. supervising a student doing PhD. Doing PhD. He's doing, he's, it's too much. It's too much for him. And he's also a guest lecturer he's, he's in another, in another that university. All that stress and he'll just compile the knowledge. Because he knows after that one small break, he moves to the next one like that. It's not like here where just one lecturer just teaches you that thing constantly and that's it. That's all. So it's it's very stressful. And students are not that much. I feel like it's more like the traditional way of learning. Like that was the, like the olden days. And yeah. and I and I this makes me um Talk, talk, or uh, talk about this Gen Z generation. We all know, like, we are now in the Gen Z generation. People that are born from the 1995 or 1990s downward. This Gen Z, they know they hear word. It's not like they don't used to hear word, but they pay less attention to details. Yeah. Shorter attention span. That is to say, the method of learning. They are impatient. They are impatient. You can You now want me to stay in class for two hours. You are just talking. Now that you think that you are talking, not like I don't understand it. Though. You now want me to pour it exactly the way it is. So now it's more like the. It's an old method of teaching, and. And I feel like it's still like this in some Western countries too. I won't yeah. blame and it's more like it's something that they should change. The because era um, has gone. yeah, the the era that they are coming from is more of the technological age. Like those people love engagement. They love uh, people that engage them. So you can't you can't you can't compare during our own time when. Um, there was no much technology and yeah. stuff like that. So well, most of these kids are actually being influenced by what they see, what they watch, and everything like that. So they are more exposed to the Western walls. They watch movies and see how okay. education is being conducted in the um, Western worlds. And they, they, they feel like, oh, like, I mean, what is this lecturer actually doing? Speaking for three hours, just talking, talking. And at the end of the day, the class becomes boring. Yeah. It becomes really, really boring. And um, one way to actually remedy that is just through some kind of engagements, like um, incorporate technology to, to this system. learning. And they will pick up because nobody wants to be in a class. I don't want to be in a class for two hours. Why the lecturer is just talking. I will sleep off. Yeah. And since uh, people have this mindset, like comparing the previous generation to this generation, um, information wasn't so accessible back, back then. then. So like, you know, the lecturer really holds so much knowledge and power. So once a lecturer is teaching, these are like real opportunities to get them. Right. But okay. now information is everywhere. At the click of a button, all you have to do is search whatever you want to search. As complex as that topic is, or as simple as the topic is, you can get it detailed, broken down in bits, and you get that same information. So when people carry this kind of mindset around, nobody wants to sit for, for long. a long okay. time just learning that thing because someone can have a mindset. All I have to do is open this, mm -hmm. and I have, or I watch a YouTube video and I've understood that concept. So am I coming to class? Thank you. So <laughs> people have this. Uh, people have gotten this mindset with the level of accessibility information has gotten 
in this generation, it's it's kind of uh, boring just you know sitting down and yeah. listening to some of talk. You um took me um some time. I did my masters um two thousand and eight two thousand and eighteen two thousand and nineteen. So there are some times that my lecturer is actually teaching that I'm just what the same thing they are teaching. I'm browsing it on. Sometimes I don't even take notes. I will just go home, go on my computer phone and get the same information. Then I know, la cram la pour. That's what they used to call it. Just read and just come and give them whatever it is. So um, sometimes I don't even come to class because there is no need. Because there are many textbooks, many PDF materials out there that you, you don't even need to. Like um, I I used to tell my colleagues back then. Like I would say, look. Um, what you need to do, like um, some of my colleagues will come to me like, oh, they need notes on this particular um, topic that this teacher taught. I would say just go on Google. There is a particular website that I, I go okay. that they will break down that concept in a kind of um, engaging way that like, like an invisible teacher. Like um, it's so much engaging that I even, I don't even yeah, take taxes. notes. Um, it's like I've forgotten the name of the website, but it's a kind of website that breaks down um, concepts in the university, like in a more um, way that students will be able to understand, even without going to classes and stuff like that. So I used to use this um, website, and come on, I'll be getting a 70, 77. Oh, this kind of. The thing is, like, we all know that this is how it is now, but I feel like these people don't want to accept the fact that um, things have changed. They don't want to accept the fact. And that's why they are trying to... Because they don't like it. They don't so like it. They don't want to incorporate Sorry for interrupting. Mm. Because um, like Daniel said, um, during uh, back then, the lecturer has the um, utmost power in the sense that they're like an um, epitome of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like is to knows everything. Even um, some of my lecturers will say that um, during their home time, you dare not. Um, there's a corridor, like their office. So there's a corridor. You dare not go to that corridor without Why? not being invited. Why? You can't go there because they are so scared of the lecturer that <laughs> you can't. In fact, your lecturer can't be coming, and you are also coming. No, you, they're not going you well. <laughs> <laughs> so this lecturer has that power and they still uh, till today they still want to hold on to that power like yeah they know everything right. they, yeah. they, they don't know that things have changed things have changed they are still thinking they know it they don't know that what they know is just at a click of a button yeah. Yeah. you know and, and because of that they, any any time we use this ethos yes as um, my practice, they see it as uh, we don't want to stress our brain, yeah. but they don't want to see it as using it. Let, let, let us use it to our advantage. Since this is how it has been, let, like Google search has come out, how do we convert it to our advantage and let us be more productive? Imagine I heard that some school wants to ban the, or is it Nigeria as a whole, wants to ban the use of chat GBT. Okay. When 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 I was in a class, in my present class I'm having now, my teacher gave us an assignment. And do you know what she said at the end of the assignment? She said, you can use chat GPT. I encourage everyone to be creative with it. I use it. I want you to use it. I want you to do a lot with it and give me something good. Imagine a teacher saying it. The, you know, the issue with the statement, you know, banning chat GPT. There are two sides of something. There's the extreme version of something and there's the um, other extreme version of something. So most of the old, uh, the old generation are taking one extreme side of something or that's the, you know, put so much effort in using your, just the manual way. Yeah. And the extreme side of this generation is the abuse of technology, basically. Okay. Because there's nothing wrong with using ChatGPT to achieve a, a, lot of a lot of things. You can use it and bring out creative, wonderful, uh, productive yeah. results. And you can abuse it and bring out good things while 
not knowing anything. So <laughs> there's you trying to separate. I know what I'm doing. I'm speeding up the process. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm also speeding up the process. So those are two sides. And, of and this is where the teacher has a huge role to exactly. play. There are so many. Do you know that with the system of education here, um, we don't, we, 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 there's no room for malpractice. Not because of they don't want to, um, um, you are going to get caught. With the system, malpractice is not even accepted. Mm -hmm. So when you use ChatGB to answer such questions or such um, um, tests given to you, there's no how you would not learn because it, when you have a question, who is the president of Nigeria? You go to ChatGPT. Just you might not know it. You might just forget about it because it's so direct. And that kind of questions are more like you can go and use um, ChatGPT and, and answer. Say, use Google and, and those ones can now make you do um, my practice and everything. At Abos Police, um, there was a course um, um, digital like Google Lahat using the um, Google Analytics platform. So. There was a test that the lecturer actually gave us, like this was my first exam ever here at Harbour Space. So um, the thing is that, okay, we're doing the test and the guy was like, oh, you can actually use ChatGPT, not to actually do, but just to speed up the process to give you ideas and stuff. So um, the thing is that um, I've heard a lot of experts actually speak on those ChatGPT issues and what they usually say is that ChatGPT is not there to do your work for you. ChatGPT is actually there to aid your work, to actually help you, not to actually, because you can't, um, um, this technology, this AI, you can't actually um, remove the human part. You still have to play your part unless you get it all wrong because the, the, the AI is not um, totally correct. You still have to, there are some times, um, like I'm a digital marketer, and there's some times in the office because I just finished my internship. So there's some times that I use AI, and my supervisor is like correcting me, like said, um, you don't actually have to use AI to do everything. You can use AI to help you to speed up the process and just to give you ideas. Then you using your own initiative to make it better, to make it perfect. Because sometimes you just um, use ChatGPT and you put everything there, then everything becomes just, uh, just a hoax and there is a lot of rubbish and out there. So you still need the element of human touch. So um, I would disagree with um, the school banning ChatGPT because AI is actually here to stay. Yeah. And it will keep on improving, keep on improving. improving. It's, it's, and in fact, we will still see something much more better than ChatGPT. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah. they need because to start implementing it so that people will be aware of the importance and how they yeah. can use it positively. Thank you. All the all the school systems need to do is, as much as they want to avoid people abusing the technology, that's why they have to inform, inform people this on what this is. How it should be used. Mm -hmm. There's no need restricting it or removing it from the system. It's already there. So all you have to do is okay, you can use this extent. Speed help yourself. Because at the end of the day, do you know how much ChatGPT has helped people learn different things or yeah. uh, improve In different of aspects of their job? Yes, it has done a lot. But at the same time, yes, it can be abused in a different way when someone is just you know, they don't really understand what's going on and they are just, you know, do this copy and paste, drop that and yeah. So um, um, instead okay. of allowing using abusing it, all the the school has to do is make make it in a way that students are using it to learn. Like just bring out the good aspect of the of technology it. and everyone should be progressing, you know, rapid and pace. And this well uh, brings me to a teacher here at Abbott Space. Um, Stephanie Shewap, she's our social media and content marketing lecturer. So um, our, our set, um, that was last year. So I think ChatGPT was not that popular or okay. it has not actually come out. So um, we, uh, we did a course like um, um, social media strategy, like creative strategy. So 
it involves um, writing, creating content, creating uh, blog posts and all those kind of things that's yeah. copywriting in general. Mm -hmm. So um, this course was a little bit, I would say a little bit difficult because you have to think outside of the box okay. Okay. to create um, uh, efficient copies and all those kind of things. Then uh, when she came back um, this year, this, um, I think, no, no, it was last year, last okay. year, September, when ChatGPT okay. have actually okay. become more prominent. Mm -hmm. So um, what she did is that she kind of structured the course in a way that it's a students won't be able to use ChatGPT Chat that much. That is what I'm saying. Like she was, she even um, um, took to her LinkedIn um, platform and said that she was even thinking of a way to actually structure this course in the way that Chargibis. students will still be able to use think, to think, to but use their brain. But you can still use you cannot yeah. directly. You yeah, have to direct, you have to think, things. you have to uh, um, uh, it's put that human touch, that human, it's just, it's just like that a human element. We have something like that. He has put the whole code through ChatGPT, so he knows all the results. All the results. So when, once he sees your code, he can tell you, <laughs> this is ChatGPT. So at the end of the day, you have to learn what is actually going on. And mm, I, was, I was also doing one course like that. I did about, about two courses that this same thing repeated. One was branding experience and the second was um, team process and design. So they said something in common because I uh, probably went to ChatGPT and just copied like do and the, 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 the teacher just looked at it and said, why did he just go and just copy the whole of ChatGPT and paste here? It's not sounding human. <laughs> go and make this thing better. But it was asking the question. So he, she, he was trying to make me understand that um, um, I can use ChatGPT, but I should be creative with creative, it. Exactly. I should make it human. That's so since then, I don't think change. anytime I'm using it's my really ChatGPT really now, and I know I'm submitting it, I, I just see it as a source of inspiration because I've now been educated in it. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria have not even gotten to that point of educating on ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Instead, mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. are, they are even thinking, don't even use it at all. You know, um, like I said, um, I'm a digital marketer. So in the field of digital marketing, especially when I was... Um, doing my internship. So um, there, there are some AI generated words that my supervisor actually yeah, 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 created yeah, a lot of screen, like a document <laughs> for AI generated words and say, words like, these words are banned. Yeah, no, banned. Please, no, do not use this in content. Like, <laughs> I mean, in, in, in fact, um, th there are some times that you, you even create blog posts and you uh, find out that ChatGPT have repeated some, you know, there are, you know, some uh, words, some wor in, not yeah. even some words, Meticulous. some sections, <laughs> some even sections <laughs> that <laughs> in, 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 um, this particular word, um, <laughs> sentence yeah. was actually there, then you see it again. The same yeah, word you know, at the bottom. Yeah, that's, true. that's why you have to so be very, careful. Be very, very careful when you use ChatGPT. So know, you don't mess yourself up. We will not, we'll not know this. That's just the truth because we are not. We are even being chased out. Like you don't even want us to even use it. And then because of this, ChatGPT has not even spread the way it should spread in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Imagine someone still have no heard of ChatGPT in this Gen Z in Nigeria. What the power of ChatGPT? Okay, there was this guy that taught me mathematics when I was in school taught me like in, in my undergraduate. So we became very, a very good friend, like very good friends. Then um, I came here, then we were having a conversation sometime, um, some few months ago, and he was asking me, he wants me to help him do something. I was like, guy, guy use ChatGPT, bro, and do this thing. Like, what is ChatGPT? This was someone that actually taught me mathematics in my 100, 200 level. So it's a bit older than me. And I was like, you, you have now, be, it's more like he has been left out technology. Like, technology <laughs> has you. left him behind. <laughs> you get, and yes. he, he's trying to catch up. He's, I don't even think he's trying to catch up because he does not even know it and he does not want to even know it because I even told him to go and, to go and um, check, yes. use it mm -hmm. and you're like, I, I, check, I tried it, this is not what I don't know. Please help me do it. And it was just a simple thought that I was like, I was like, ChatGPT can do it for you. And he does not know it. Yeah. 
I was like, what have you been thinking? Like, yes, like yes, this, I, this I, is I, it's just like it's just it's just before. like our parents, some of our parents don't know Google search. You get because now we have left the era of Google search. Him now, I feel like he still depends on Google. He does not know that there is another one yeah. that has that um, can that actually get place. you your information. information. And, the, I think ChatGPT has like um, is is they don't they are not catching up with the technology. Yeah. That's basically what I just understand, understand about. Understand about them. Yeah. About That's them. actually how how it is in some parts of the country. Technology is advancing. Some people are now aware You're that technology aware. has it's moved forward. You know, advanced. so okay. them they are catching up to technology while. But now, now it's not like now we are catching up with um, with ChatGPT now. Like we are following the trend. Yeah. Our parents are just recently catching up with Google search. <laughs> <laughs> or some lecturers. Okay, probably some lecturers are still revolving around. I just pray that I keep catching up with the recent and latest um, technology. technology. It's very important, even yeah. as as the world is advancing and so, technology will continue to improve. That's why. One of the things they used to tell um, us at the office during our internship is that you must keep on updating, updating yourself. yourself. And like, the school will also play a major part in updating yourself. Yeah. Imagine a system of um, Nigerian school where a lecturer gives us assignments. Guess what? We come, when we want to submit the assignment, we start chasing the... It will start looking for cost rep to submit the assignment. I don't know if it happened to you guys. Yeah, I don't know. Cost rep will be in canteen, chopping food. <laughs> If you don't come by ten o'clock, you are going. You are, missed. you, you no, missed. We no, no, we'll just we we'll just type it on the WhatsApp group. Ten p ten a.m. and oh, I am not collecting anymore. Yeah. Then you 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 live like oh, ten kilometers yeah. away and start following start following man man waiting man do man. Because you go the roads. You dare not go give the lecture yourself. Do you know that I heard about Google Classroom when I came here? It's there some technology that even left me behind. So. I know like like that's what, I have to come here and catch up. Google like Google I came and I didn't even know that Google even have a lot of products mm -hmm. that has like a full package. We all think that Google only have Chrome, email, Google, Google Map, Drive, YouTube, Google Map, Map and, and YouTube, that's and that's all. Man, bro, Google has a lot of things. Lot of things. Google have Google Doc, Doc Google. Google PDF, Google uh, Classroom, Google Meet. Google um, PowerPoint presentation, Google uh, Sketch, Google Excel, like Google, the, Google Market. Google, Google Market. Fuck! Like when I came here, I was now like, all these things exist. The one that now off me was that Google Classroom, where we can even submit assignments. And the due time of the assignment is if it's one p.m. It's actually there. You can. He's showing there. You to show that, bro. You did not submit your assignment. Give me notification. notification. I don't think there's right. any university in Nigeria that uses Google Classroom. But did you use Google Classroom in any of your classes? Ah, Even yeah. as a computer science, you studied in Covenant University, number one university yeah. in Nigeria. Every private every university. The majority of things are manualized. Like. Is manual. Is manual. <laughs> At the end of it, you can all they have to do is automate so many parts of the system, and you have a very, very functional system. You have assignment this day. It will give you a notification. You have to submit your assignment by this time. Yes, you quickly do your this thing, submit the your assignment. Really so your the lecturer system. is not stressing to. All they have to do is click. Click, mm -hmm. click. Oh, this is what he did. Mm, grade him. Send the grade. You, you see your, you grade. See your grade. Everything yeah. is structured. Or system. And system. And in Nigeria, we are still. Sometimes we don't even. Some of these scores we scored, we don't even know them. We don't know them. You don't don't know. Um, uh, what you go and burn all your paper. You some of the examples. You don't do know if whoever marked you. Sometimes you have missing scripts. And these are results. Like, imagine having a missing script in Google Classroom. Is it possible? I've had the issue of missing test paper now. Like, you know, yeah, test. It's not, it's not your test is yeah. missing. Yeah. Right. And you're explaining it. No evidence. No you're evidence. just, you're just you explain that. In fact, you go and you just call you that. You go explain. They are there. They are also, um, let me see, a little bit kind. It depends on the department. So sometimes if you miss your test at that ticket. The lecturer can just call you and say, uh, come and yeah, see me. Like, come and see me in my office yeah, and stuff like that. Is, or come and, I mean, I mean, there was a time that... In Nigeria. Yeah. Technology. Especially in the educational system. In the educational, yeah, education 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 system. education system. I mean, why, because this are why the Gen Z's. Why someone's script? I mean, if you, if you actually use um, things like 
um, Google Classroom. It can it will be there forever. I mean, um, I've graduated from Abbott Space. But you and still have access, access, access to my scores, every single materials that the lecturer yes, has used. Yes, every single yeah. material. The assignments, the assignments are submitted, your materials, the grades, everything, the reviews. I still have everything. It's still there. It's still there. You can forever. You can go and access it. Although in your email, because it's on your email. We have we have a, like a portal kind of this thing where the mm. post courses you see CSC two one six um, GST blah blah blah. So you go there. You, like the notes are still there yeah. if you have if you have access to your portal. So they are still there. But some other parts, some other schools. If, no. Right. Handouts. Like they give you it's a hand. Like it's, like it's not like that in my school. I think um, Commerce University is trying to catch up, but it's so poor that they are trying. They're trying. But it's, it's, it's painful that. But this thing doesn't cost much now. Does it cost much? They're, they're trying to use Google Classroom. It's free. They didn't just eliminate all these lecturers and, and retire all of them. <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, I know professors are scarce. Good, yeah, but they are, they are, they are junior lecturers, let them start from somewhere and replace this. Imagine a junior lecturer that does not know all these things. I think that's where the problem should start. Is, I don't blame professors because they are old. They are it's fine. They are, they are generation. The same way they are educating you know, students on the tech, they should also educate their staff on the tools. On the tools. So if the staff know the tools, the students they know the tools. 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 Let them, let them see they the technologies and bro. I came to have a space and a lot of things change. Like my mentality, like the the way the system is structured is As like was, it's way different from Nigeria. Like it is now. I am saying I am going to school. I am not saying this to um, against Federal University of Technology, but I was say I, 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 I didn't go to school. I went to school, but at the same time, I did not go to school because the way the system was, I was not learning. I was not learning. Sometimes I don't go to class. You, you see some people that don't go to class and will still pass. And will still pass. Will still pass. Exactly. Because um, um don't come to class because yeah, now. And how do you want to pass? Because now. Um, um look at it. Okay. Test 30%. Exam 70%. I might not come to class then just collect exam, someone's notes. Someone's notes. They read a uh, cram if I'm a very, very good crammer. Come and hit everything. I force everything. Three, eight. Um, then up at the end of the day, you do it like that. You do it like that. You get your first class. You are a good. You are a good student. They will give you prize. Yeah. I mean, what? The? <laughs> like so, um, 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 in abroad, where um, a situation where you have to do a lot of things, you have to present. Like, um, when I came to Abbott Space. I, I would say that Abbott Space actually um, helped me improve my presentation skills. Excuse. My, my mm -hmm. even a lot of presentations you present, and you know, there is this feeling that um, you've done your work and you are proud to present it. That Sentence. oh, I'm the one that did this. I still have a lot of my presentations, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like you I stole them and yeah, the am I the one? You you be like you enjoy what you understand. It. Understand. Like you just are enjoying this. Um, that's, that's my, my, I was having a conversation with my brother yesterday, and we were just having a very good discussion. We we're talking, 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 talking. Then I said, I didn't even know it was a reflex action. I started saying things that I was taught in class unconsciously. Then I was like, my teacher said this, this, I was just saying it. Like, I just felt like I am filled. Like, yeah, he like choked. Right. Not yeah, like I arrived. Like, when I mean filled, like, it's just like a cup where there's water. And before I was like, there was no water, I was empty. Yeah, because yeah. when you don't, if you don't, there's, there's nothing in your head, there's nothing you can talk, you can say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now I have a lot of things to say. I, I am learning. Quality. The quality is now showing. Quality. So when I was in Nigeria, Bro, I won't lie. I studied transport management technology, but I can't even come out and say I want to work in a supply chain um, industry or a transport um, industry because I don't think I am. I'm going to put. I'm not qualified enough because I don't fucking know anything there. And we didn't really go to school. 
Yeah, Most yeah. of the things we learned was on our own. Another, another thing is that um, even, okay, I did my bachelor's. I didn't get anything that was even related to my, to the course that I studied, no studying. internship, nothing. I did master, nothing. Then I got to Arbor Space, um, like, okay, before Arbor Space, I started um, working with a digital marketing agency and even from that digital marketing agency, this was even outside of school, totally. Okay. And I got into our boss space because um, I did an interview with them and they saw that, oh, I was qualified and they offered okay. me a full scholarship. Then I started learning at our boss space, I, a lot of things, like I started building this connection. Then I graduated. Even before I graduated, I found a scholarship that was actually related to what I did, okay. like it was, it was a different environment entirely. Like I mean, I, I was now saying that, like what have I been doing in, all this in school? Yes, okay. All this why? Because um, in, in, in I, I, to be frank, to be frank, um, I studied political science, and there are some um, a lot of programs that I applied for, like internship in the field of political science, like um, stuff like that. I didn't get in. Why? Because I did not have any working experience, experience. in that particular field. So they can't, <laughs> you are, because you are competing with global talent. talent. Now, and we, we, we are talking about um, students that they've started internship right from their high school days. Yeah. They've started uh, doing extracurricular activities volunteering uh, work and all those things that will actually boost your CV, boost your qualifications. And you see these people getting this kind of roles. And you, that you are doing like la crème la peau oh, exactly. in UI, and you want to compete with those things. It's not possible now. It's, 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 it's actually next to impossible. Yeah. You won't get in. And, you know, um, I got to Apple Space. I have um, some experience back in Nigeria. I, I have um, a lot of industry experience, experience. in Apple space. I was able to easily get his, uh, get this internship because now I now have something in me. You are you as confident? Yeah, you that I can okay. do this thing. In fact, I asked the I, I did three interview, and I asked everything. They were even eager to employ me. Employee. Like, and that was because. I came to our space. I changed I environment. And it, it, it was a game changer. I think where the problem again starts from is first of all, in Nigeria, you, you are forced to do what you don't want to do. Mm. You are forced to you are forced to uh, read a course you don't want to study. A lot of people in Nigeria are reading a course they don't want to study. Look at me. I wanted to study information yes. management technology. That was my course that I planned. But I didn't know that Nigeria is planning for me. And at the end of the day, I started studying transport management. But if you say I stop on, say this information management is not by going to this school. And thank God I am still in that field of what I love to want to do, mm. information management. So they wanted to, they wanted to force me. They wanted, the, the system also wanted to force me to do, to do this thing. So I, a lot of people, if you're watching me, you and the system, has placed you somewhere you don't want to be. It is still your destiny there your hand. Still there your hand. Look at you, you're a digital marketer. Yeah. You come up from the political science. Like I, I, there's, there's plenty of information. Yeah. Computer science will depend on what see, computer science see, what they teach you. Will you be a data scientist? Yeah. Something. That's why you see a lot of people, a lot of folks depressed at your work. Because they don't actually they are not, know they are what, not what they are doing. They are just it's, it's they are not just like there, just really. to get uh, and make ends meet. Yeah. At the end of the day, they get depressed and go yes. home and stuff mm -hmm. like that. If, if you like what like um, if you like what you're doing, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's a whole new it's experience. A, it's a whole new experience. You know when it's on, it's on myself. And my my brother would be like, I saw something. I want you to be a computer scientist. I want you to be a programmer. And himself was no, he's not he's not he's not he's not, he's not getting it. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be this. This is where I find joy. This is what I want to do. Like, yeah, what so I want to do. Happy doing. Doing. Yeah. Steve Jobs, I heard, wanted to uh, he wanted he went to one of the best schools before he dropped out. And because he knew at the early 
time of, that his parents were just wasting money. Mm. Before he went and started become uh, uh, started uh, doing designs and how to do typography, and that was how Steve discovered who it is. So first of all, Nigeria will kill you already. Will kill you, but it's still not an excuse for still failing. Yeah. The system is not designed to help you to help to you. help you guys. Um, <coughs> you need to help yourself because when I came to Abuja, at the end of the day, everyone's responsible for them for their distance. Yeah. We are not all from Nigeria, and we we, we we tried for ourselves, and that's why we are in this place, and we are discovering and seeing things differently. Do you know what I told a colleague of mine here at Abuja Space um, last year? Um, we just finished, um, I think. A, an entrepreneur course where um, a lot of investors was, was actually invited. And I was telling him that, you know, that this, this, this is the first um, kind of, um, apart from um, Cameron's class, like this is my first ever like presentation that I'm actually pitching an idea to investors. I, 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 I was telling him that Nigeria don't care about your dream. They don't Fucking don't fucking care, care about, your dream. about you, like they, uh, they don't give a there shit. There was one time in my school, our first class, the, the best graduating students. Abi, if you are a first class student, they were giving them one one thousand as a as a souvenir, as a gift. Yes, in my school, what an insult for a first class graduate okay, that have been struggling for five years. Oh my geez, can you can you imagine? Like um, I, I was telling him that the system is not actually built to help you. Like, we don't have um, talent shows, we don't have even fears and all these kind of things that they have in the United States, Since Britain, see and all those kind of things. Someone's strength. So like, I think why not know? And once they engage in these activities, these extra activities, yeah. and before you know, someone finds out, oh, I'm good at this thing, no. And all it takes is just to invest so much time into it. Because at the end of the day, everyone can't just be a doctor or um, an engineer or um, a lawyer you can't there are so many there are, the amount of rules out there besides this one that we're forced to know there are so much it only takes um, people that are really really outstanding to be able to excel in nigeria like when i mean really outstanding for them for them to be able to beat the system, the system. and definitely People that are really outstanding are not up to even 5%. Okay. Majority of what we have are people that are just average and very good students, but not excellent. excellent. So these very good students even um, tend to even go down because of the system. We have excellent There's a whole lot of people. That. Different people have potential, but because of the system, of the system. you see yourself as useless potential. when the amount of potential you, you have in, in like you, you have is so much, but because of how the system is designed, not in and, and when you now come out in the in the in the in the Western world, you now become scared. You you feel inferior. You feel you have this low self-esteem because you are not filled with knowledge. Like, because what first of all, what brings low self-esteem is knowledge. When you are confident with what you, you know, you, you can know. speak. Exactly. When you have Where? so much content in you, you, like, you, you, speak. you speak. When you don't, when you don't know it, when you don't have exposure, you don't know it. You, 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 it kills you. So, uh, what uh, I want to ask this: Do you think parents also play a role in this whole system? Do you think parents has a role to play? I'll say for me, I'll say that's because at the end of the day, as a child, mm -hmm. as before you even decide, this is what I want to be. It's your parents that are guiding you. That's, that's the first guide in any part of life. Your parents before you now go out to school <laughs> and they now direct you. So your parents are your first guide, the first um, person you follow mm -hmm. or look up to or get any form of information are your parents. So they play a massive role in your... I know a girl back then in secondary school she wants to be she know her parents forced her to become a doctor oh. and when i say like anything science this girl is really bad at it like, bad like but she chemistry a no chemistry zero over ten oh, Physics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no 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 that not that not that not that bad <laughs> not that bad like bad she doesn't she like was. science. But her parents are forcing her to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make sense. Like, you are seeing that your, your child is always failing. 
but, but you're still you, you've not taken time actually, to ask actually. what's the problem yeah. is it like is what you're doing what you want yeah. like the thing is majority of parents tell you what you should be instead yeah. of them finding Accent. out what you what can you be but i feel like if they ask us mm-hmm. we don't we don't have we are not yet no, grown at some know. point at some point yes your parents are the ones guiding you oh yeah go down that's why as a parent parent to be a parent is not easy you have to understand your child. Like when I was small, my dad started noticing your strengths. Our strengths are because of co- as a child you engage in different activities now. Mm-hmm. Like you're exposed to so many activities. From there, your parents now start noticing. Okay, this guy is good at this thing. Mm, I'll push him towards this direction. This child is good at this. I'll start pushing towards this direction. That's how it he is started. as a parent. That's why in the early stage they are the ones guiding you. Then once you now reach the stage where, okay, I'm knowledgeable enough. Mm. Okay, daddy, mommy, I want to be this. Mm. This is what I want to be. I like this and I want to start. And your parents then now support you in furthering that aspect and you now become specialized in it. So yes, parents play a mm-hmm. massive role in the education of... Parents actually parents actually play a massive role too. Yes, what do you think, okay? Um, I would agree with Daniel because, uh, like he said... Um, the first agent of socialization that's the family <clears throat> and um the thing is that your parents actually tend to influence your behavior and your decision in life and um that's why they, um, they always tell us in school that um like learned parents um the children are more uh likely to follow that particular footstep. So, and uh, we are, we also have some deviant parents too, that, um, you know, the kind of, okay, wants their son or daughters to become this or that based on their own perspective. There are some people that, or oh, because they have a business, they want their, uh, they want their children to become accountants and stuff like that. And that might not be the, uh, the yeah, the child's line. And you, 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 like, look at uh, Files now. Files, yeah, yeah did not video, actually want, want to become force, a lawyer. Want to force the video to become this thing, to become a, what, what's the video want to study? I think um, I this thing before he now started studying yeah. music. He did, he, he did, left. He did the law all right. Then he, after he graduated. And this is something that the parents should be able to figure out even before the child. Like, ah, like this child is, and yeah. music, music, call the trainer to you see, that side. Um, um, when I was growing you know, me and my brother were always joke that, oh, you will be a lawyer, you will be a doctor, and stuff like that. Then yeah. life happened, and I thank God for the kind of parents I have because they are learned people, and um, they don't, mm, they usually support us in what you want to be. Like, they are not the kind of people that so um, say, oh, you must become this, you must yeah. become that. And um, my brother studied economics, although it's very, very good when it comes to all this technology, engineering mm-hmm. and stuff. It can actually dismantle this uh, microphone and mm-hmm. repair it back. Like, just um, look at it on the net and just, an it's an economics and stuff like that. But, and I would say, um, again, uh, back to our previous conversation about the system in Nigeria. Someone like my brother would have been a very fantastic engineer, a mm-hmm. very, very good engineer, but the system didn't actually, because, um, uh, how would I say it now? The school was not encouraging. The school, it went to OEU. <laughs> and that actually destabilized him, killed his dream so and everything. Like, I mean, okay, okay, for instance, okay, at in his um, high school, um, SS1, SS2, let's say, for instance, they've had something like a career day, like an expert have actually come, like a workshop, set up a workshop, and all these companies actually come and give these kids a lot of tax, let them do something. And probably um, someone like my brother, they just give him some kind of a piece of machine, then he assembled it together. They would have, oh no, like taking it up from there and say, oh, this guy will be like a good, but there was nothing like that. There was nothing like that. And I think this is where even abroad, 
like US and yeah, like have advantage than us. Like they encourage us to then write from this. Um, I was writing a particular article um, about um, recruiters. It, it, it's about recruiting. So I, I, I learned a lot of things. Even when you write articles, you learn a lot of things. Like this fear, they call it job fears. And they come to these high schools, even universities like Apple, um, yeah, Mercedes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all these uh, big, big companies. They come to recruit right from yeah. even high schools. So they, they call them saucer, talent saucers. For talent. For talent. Like, yeah, we don't yeah, have sure. things like that in Nigeria. But those kind of things encourage students. Encourage students. students. Uh, and we don't they have... They only tell you, you know, in secondary school, maybe you just had small flair for um, something technological. Yeah. And maybe um, yeah. Samsung, they just came. Well, yeah, come and do internship with us for just a small time. Bro, you like, want to push want that to thing push further. That thing further. Okay. It sounds more like a motivation. <laughs> And it's not nice. Well, um, I hope you've all learned. This is really a very controversial and very, is it controversial or very direct? Very interesting topic. Subjective, controversial. Also, a lot, like, so because this, there are some things we agreed on and we did not agree. Chicha, GBT. Um, and, uh, okay, before we now round up, um, definitely this Nigerian system has some benefits. What do you think is the benefit? Like, even if it's one, it has, what has Nigeria system done to you? Yeah. Has it made you stronger? I'll say it's, it has given me this relentless... Um, Ginger. Yeah, when it comes to learning. Like, Stubble. because of all the Lapa ways the, we've had to study or, you know, read or prepare for exams, I, I think it has given me that relentless kind of um, yeah. character. And also, once it comes to grabbing theoretical aspects of something, I guess, yes, Nigeria has, Nigeria has helped me. I think the same thing for me, because Nigeria system is built to make you make you rigid. Yeah. Because when you are frustrated, you do the unthinkable. <laughs> <laughs> and it has, under it, pressure. Yeah, under pressure, yes, Nigeria is the kind, is the redefinition of, can you work under pressure? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can work under pressure. So I feel it has made... Uh, me discover a lot of things about myself. It has made me very intentional too. Like it has made me very. It has tough. It you has know. made me very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Even if, uh, you it know, has um, a lot of. There is this uh, thing I used to when I, you know, I was so freaked out when I graduated from University of Ibadan. Two one. I, 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 I don't graduate. It's like I graduated. So I was I was kind of boastful that. Come on, like I don't know if we could actually make mm -hmm. a two one in the UI. Right. I don't think there's, there's any, any, any university in the any, world that you that go, go that you I will not excel yeah. because so, because the universities in Nigeria see, is being to well, toughen you up. It's very easy for it us, like it will make you hard. We don't suffer. <laughs> That's because it's a rough, my bro. Like I'm really, really happy. Thank you, you get, um, Thank you very much for coming and uh, me, yeah, Daniel. I really appreciate. Like it is a very, very interesting conversation, and I believe that it is. Uh, we we all learned together. Yes. We we talked yes. about a lot of things, and I believe my viewers also um, gained a lot. So please, if you've not subscribed to this, my channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Are you not liking what you're saying? Definitely uh, more of these are coming back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, my name is Samson Pius, and uh, we're calling this a wrap for today. We still keep giving you the information on your jackpot so that when you come, what we're experiencing, you self go follow experience out. Thank you very much. I'll see you again in the next uh, video I'll be uploading soon. Sit down and bye-bye.